Hey YouTube, uh, today is Saturday, December 26, 2009, and um, Merry Belated Christmas to everyone who's into that sort of thing. Uh, talk a little Vikings. I made half of this video once already and then the camera's battery died because my wife was taking pictures of the kids and stuff on Christmas, so yeah, what can you do? Um, but I'm trying to remember back what all I was saying. <sighs> Last game the Vikings played, of course, was that terrible loss on NBC National Television Sunday Night Football against the Carolina Panthers. And it was discouraging, to say the least. Um, the Vikings have now laid two eggs in three weeks at Arizona, and more recently at Carolina. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I saw out of that game, what I'm going to be looking for going forward, and uh, stuff like that. So, <clears throat> last week, uh, the good. I saw the defense play very good football for the first three quarters. Um, the fourth quarter obviously was not so good. You look at the points that were scored and uh, by Carolina, and it looks really bad. But um, it's not like they were running a lot of plays and driving down the field. They just had uh, a few big plays here and there that the defense missed on, and um, and that's what all the scoring was. So, um, and uh, that's still unacceptable for uh, pro defense. But at the same time, and here's the the real stat: is the Vikings had the football for 22 minutes in that game, and the Panthers had it for 38. That's lopsided, and uh, any defense is going to get tired in the fourth quarter when you're doing that kind of time with possession. So, um, I don't really put a whole lot of blame on the defense. I'm not in love with the safeties. I think Cedric Griffin and, of course, Antoine Winfield are great corners. Winfield kind of had an off night. Um, and I think that Jasper Brinkley is a sixth-round rookie, <laughs> and he's no E.J. Henderson, uh, and that shows. But um, he he hits hard. He finds he finds the hole, and he plugs it up. Uh, he hesitates a little, because I think he's got burned a couple times, and I'd like to see him hesitate less and go for it. And also, he hits a lot better than he tackles, and I'd like to see him wrap up and finish a tackle. Um, so... Uh, the safeties in the middle linebacker, really the whole middle of the defense is sort of sort of a concern uh, past the defensive line, of course. Um, but that said, I think they played pretty well in Carolina overall uh, until that last quarter. But the offense is what stunk it up. Um, and I saw Favre doing a good job with what he had. I saw Adrian Peterson doing a good job um, with what he had. I saw... Sidney Rice fumble a great catch. I saw Vicente Shanko drop uh, what would have been a first down on a third and 15. And uh, the Rice play or the Shanko play could have been momentum changing for the Vikings, but they didn't happen. Um, and the running play never really got going much. And uh, really, I think the offensive line sort of mailed it in. And that's not acceptable. I mean, the Vikings have won the NFC North, which is awesome. Um, by virtue of the Packers losing last week to the Steelers, which was a crazy finish and a lot of fun to watch. But um, Bryant McKinney looked like he just didn't care, and the Minnesota staff looked like they just didn't care to give him any help. Um, very rarely did I see a tight end or a running back stay in to help and chip or uh, pick up the blitz. And so it was it was poor effort by the left tackle and poor adjustment by the Minnesota coaching staff. Also, Hutchinson has been a Pro Bowl guard for a long time. He's starting to look old uh, as the season wears on, which is unsettling because he's by far the best part of the offensive line. Uh, and when McKinney is trying, those two are fantastic together on the left side. And for the past several years, with Matt Burke in there, man, you had, a, you had half your line just locked down good. Um, but John Sullivan, he stepped in. He's doing an okay job for a second-year pro, first-year starter. <clears throat> but I still see mistakes made there. Herrera is a serviceable to above-average guard on the right side, which is fine. It's, that's fine. And uh, Phil Lodeholt's been great as a rookie. 
I think Minnesota got a good deal with him on the second in the second round, but man, the offensive line just did not do well, and I think that's pretty much the whole problem um, last week. Uh, Harvin looked slow, like the migraines hadn't gone away entirely. That doesn't help. Um, special teams, I didn't really see much to comment on either way. But uh, Oh, and one other thing I want to say is um, I felt a little honored as a Vikings fan that Carolina played their Super Bowl pretty much. You could tell by the way the players were fired up and uh, just just the whole feel of the game. Man, Carolina knew they were they were hosting an 11 and 2 team on national television and they were 5 and 8 and they weren't going to the playoffs and they said, "This is it, guys. Um we're looking forward to next year already, but this this week is a good week to make a statement." And they did. So hats off to the Panthers for doing a great job and um the Vikings just still capable of beating that team, of course, but they just they just didn't do it. So looking ahead, Minnesota still has a shot at the one seed. If they win both of their last two games and New Orleans loses both of theirs, otherwise that's out, and I don't think they're going to get it. Uh, and there is a possibility that they slip out of the two seed spot. Um, the Eagles have kept winning, and they're the ones with the best shot at the two seed right now. They might be the only ones with a shot at the two seed, I'm not sure. But um, Minnesota needs to win a game to safely uh put them away. I think I think I'm pretty sure if they win this week and the Eagles lose that that's it, that Minnesota's got the second seed cinched up and the game against the Giants is meaningless. Um I haven't checked all the scenarios yet, so we'll see what happens with that. The Vikings should be able to beat the Bears even in Chicago, even late. Um I'm looking to see a short pass game. <sighs> I hope I, would, I talked about this a little last week, but I'd love to see Chester Taylor and Adrian Peterson on the field, uh, Shanko and Kleinsaucer on the field, and Harvin uh, as your five weapons, and then quarterback in the offensive line. Um, Chester Taylor is a great blocker. Kleinsaucer is a fantastic blocker. Um, Shanko uh, can block and is also a weapon. Peterson is getting a little better at picking up the blitz, can block a little, and of course he's a weapon. Chester Taylor is a weapon. And with Taylor and Harvin and Peterson on the field, you get three running backs and three guys who can receive. And Shanko's then another receiver slash blocker. And even Kleinsauser can catch a ball when he needs to. So you've got a lot of players who can block or run or catch on the field at the same time. And you've pretty much taken the Bears' safeties out of the game by leaving Barian and Rice on the bench for that play. Um, so I'm hoping we see some of that. I wouldn't mind seeing Tavares Jackson play a bit. And there's... Nothing against Brett Favre, but um, I think Jackson actually could have helped the Vikings last week in Carolina just to make a change of pace, something the defense, the Panther defense hadn't planned for. Um, and Jackson is a dual threat. Favre's not going to run it up the field. Uh, you know, and sometimes he runs up and makes a block, and we say, oh, that crazy old guy is having fun out there. But Jackson is actually a legitimate threat on the ground. Um, so I think that that could be interesting, throw him in there sometimes and see what you can make go with that. Um, yeah, Vikings should be able to beat the Bears. The Bears have a terrible offensive line. They have a terrible defensive line. Cutler's going to be good for many years, we think, I think, but he's sure sticking it up this year because that team wasn't built for him. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried about the Monday night game. I think the Vikings are going to win, and they're going to win in front of a national audience and say, listen, we put a couple stinkers out there, but here's who we really are, and uh, we're going to the playoffs, and we're going to be a very tough out for anyone who has to come to the Metrodome and play us. So, uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you later.